Hey, Sean here from speedqbview.com. I have a video in that I made a long time ago about notation and how, uh, basically how notation works with solving the cube. And I was going to redo it with the cube, but I actually think this might be a better solution. This is cubedb, and I'll have a link to it in the description. It's cubedb.net. And with here, you can type in a scramble and a solution and it'll play it out for you and it'll help organize it. A lot of cool things with it. And this actually is a really good tool for learning notation as well as just making sure you're doing it right. Let's go over some of the notation. I'll explain how this works. Each side on the cube has a letter. So if I move this around, oh, that's the wrong movement. So if I move this around, there we go. I was moving my screen that I was recording with. We have U, F, R, all these different letters. And U is for the up, the U face. F is for the front. R is for the right. L is for the left. D is for down. And then if we go there, B for the back. So hopefully that makes a little bit of sense uh, with each one. I've seen things where we have seen like a T for the top or B for the bottom, which gets really confusing. But mo this has become mostly standard. So unless you're on some really old website or something that is just not not something that has, has a lot of effort with newer updated stuff, you should be good with this. And these are the letters they use for scrambling, for official scrambles and things like that. So what is each movement? Well, there's really three things you can have. You can have a U, which moves that U face clockwise. You can have U prime, which moves it counterclockwise, and U2, which moves it 180 degrees. Now you might see U2 prime in an algorithm, and that more just gives you an idea of the best way of turning it, but they do the exact same thing. As you can see, I add the prime, nothing happens with the cube. Now with cube DB, there's a play button on the bottom. If I move up the screen here, you can actually see that play button right there. And I'm gonna hit that play button so you can see how these movements work. We have U, U prime moves it counterclockwise, and U2 moves it like that. What can be a little confusing is that side moves clockwise if you're looking directly at it. So for an example, D is going to initially look like it's moving the opposite direction. So for example, if I do a couple U moves and make sure you do capital letters, I'll explain lowercase in just a little bit. If I do this, and I'm doing a, a space between each one or I'm hitting enter between each one, that way the scramble pauses between it. So U, as you can see, moves, I would say if you're looking at it from the front, it looks like it moves left. But the D moves right. Well, how does that work? If we turn the cube this way and look at it straight on, on that D layer, you can see more clearly it is moving clockwise. And if we look at the top, you can see that is moving clockwise as well. So it's moving clockwise if you're looking directly at that side. Same thing for front and back and left and right. So if I do a couple L moves and then a couple R moves, make sure it's capital. It looks like the left is moving down and right is moving up. But if we look at the left side straight on, we can see that's moving clockwise. And if we look at the right side straight on, that is also moving clockwise. There we go. Now we're looking at the right side. That's how that works. And that will take care of pretty much 99% of all of the algorithms and 100% of the scrambling you will usually see. There are a couple other movements. So let's look at lowercase first. Lowercase moves two layers. So if I do a couple R moves, maybe a couple U moves, you'll see here I'm moving the first layer and the middle layer. So two layers. And you don't usually see that with scrambles. I've seen that with blind scrambling on something like CS timer, but you wouldn't see that in an official uh, WCA scramble. So that's what wide moves are. You might also see them written as the regular letter with a W. So thinking of it as R wide. And those do the exact same thing. Wide R and wide R. 
This can be different with bigger cubes where lowercase is often considered a slice on let's say a 4x4 four four, while the wide one is both layers, but we're just going to talk about 3x3 three three for today. There are a couple other moves you can do. You can do a rotation. Y rotation, X rotation, and Z. Y moves the exact same direction as a U move. X as an R move and Z as F. And what I mean by that, if I did X, Y, Z, you can see here. So if we just look at these first two movements, we have a U and then a Y. Same direction. Same thing if we did R and X. Here's R and then X. And lastly, same thing if we did F and Z. Now, the rotations are always lowercase, so if you're ever typing it out, just make sure you always have those in lowercase. The last thing you can have is slice moves. So I'll start with M, which is the middle layer. M and M prime. M, and then also M2, let me do M2. So we have M, that middle layer looks like it moves down. M prime moves up. M2 is a double move. And like I said, if I do M2 prime, you can see here, I'll do M2 prime and then an M2. So you can see that difference on, it does the exact same movement, but if you see this in a algorithm, it's explaining the direction to turn it to maybe make it move much more easily. The M move moves in the same direction that the L move does. That's how I started remembering it. L moves, looks like down and M moves down. Of course, L moves clockwise if you're looking directly at that face. So. The other slices we have is E, which you can think of equator. I'll do a couple of E's, a couple of E primes. So we have E, and E moves the same direction as D. For that one, I just sort of remembered that it, it sounded the same, E and D. Those move the same as far as clockwise and counterclockwise. And lastly, we have S, which you can think of as a slice. And S is going to move the same direction as F. And again, S and F sound much similar than S and B. I guess you can also say M and L sound similar as well compared to M and R. So that is it. Those are all the notations you will see for a 3x3. Three three. And using cubedb.net is a good way to check just to make sure you're doing something correctly. Now, if you are looking up algorithms, I'll stay on the same browser and go to speedqdb. And here, if we go to, let's say, 3x3, three three, and let's let's do an F2L spot, figure out how to solve some F2L cases. So and let's find one here. Let's find a fun one. Ah, F2L number 31. Now, I have some videos on some cases I've been posting, and girl who's created these sites has been really generous and put this up there. So that way you can see a visualization that way. But if you click this link, it'll actually go to CubeDB where the algorithm is written out and you can see how this is performed this way. So you can just see a visual that way to make sure you're doing all the turns correctly. If you type something in here, just make sure you put in the correct movements. And the reason you don't see any top layers is because playback you have the F12 stage. However, I do think you should put that logo right there every time you go to CubeDB.net. Hopefully this helps. If you have any questions on this, please leave them in the comment section below. Hit like, subscribe for more content like this in the future, and so stop by speedcubeview.com for news and reviews.